guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Tita Lavinia of Tita's of Pageantry. And for this episode, I will be reviewing everything that's good, bad, and ugly about the recently concluded Miss Universe Philippines finals. So please make sure you stick around. Please subscribe to the channel as well as hit that bell notification button for your weekly pageant fix. Taglish ako ngayon kasi itong pag-uusapan natin medyo masalimuot at may mga information na ayoko na sanang ma-pick up ng ibang bansa. Although, alam ko naman na ang labanan natin ngayon is Pinoy baiting pero okay lang yon At least, mas malaking exposure para sa Philippine pageantry. But then again, meron kasing mga chismis na dapat sana sa atin sa atin na lang. So, before anything else, I will be doing a review in three parts. The good, the bad, and the ugly. So, bago tayo magsimula dun sa good part, I just want to congratulate my fellow Ilonga na minsan nang nag-guest dito. Feeling ko ako nga yung last touch. Feeling ko, bertud ko nga ang naipasa natin. Feeling lang naman, sabi ng aming mga uh, followers sa Tita of Pageantry. Pero, congratulations, of course, to the beautiful Rabia Mateo who won the very first Miss Universe Philippines crown under the new franchise. So, Rabia was not considered a frontrunner, but umariba talaga siya, preliminaries pa lang, at nagtuloy-tuloy yun. So, ang ganda talaga ng hatak ng energy sa kanya. But yeah, I will be talking about her later on. So, dito na tayo sa good part ng review ko. So, first of all, I also want to congratulate the Miss Universe um, Philippines organization for staging the finals successfully. Now, it wasn't perfect, pero feeling ko naman successful. Um, I know that some of the personalities at Miss Universe Philippines, um, we don't get to see eye to eye, lalo na pagdating sa akin titas of pageantry persona. At feeling ko, iba naman yun sa... Um, totoong pagkata ako. Pero ang masasabi ko lang is I'm gonna try to do this review objectively. Kasi kung tutuosin, maganda naman talaga ang ginawa nila given na very limited yung naging resources nila, pati yung paggalaw nila. So, alam naman natin na the production, inakyat talaga nila sa bagyo yan. Um, magandang move actually yun because na-contain nila yung uh, gulo, lalo na kapag nandiyan yung mga fanes, nandiyan yung mga media, and maganda yung response, COVID response sa Baguio. So, at first, medyo naguluhan yung mga handlers, naguluhan yung mga stylists, even the girls when it came to logistics, but ngayon mo nakikita na may sense and may purpose yung pag nila sa Baguio. Um, I want to talk about the actual show muna because the actual show I think was really nice. It was really snappy. Uh, the ladies went out in sparkly dresses. At first, I thought it was going to look like the sparky, sparkly dresses from Miss World 2017, if I'm not mistaken, yung batch nila win-win. Pero iba naman pala kasi nung pinanood ko ulit yung footage, para nakikita mo naman na yung mga suot ng ladies, very Sherry Hill. Um, pero it was nice kasi ang sparkly ng dating and alam niyo naman ng mga Pinoy, Pinoy love sparkles. Um, the choreography was really good as well. Although, medyo kailangan lang siguro mas maging snappy. But, you know, guys, very little lang. Nitpicky lang naman. It doesn't really matter kasi alam naman natin na hindi tayo kailangan mag-expect ng sobrang bonggang bongga. I mean, the mere fact na binigyan nila tayo ng stage na may LED screens, that it was well lit, na mukha namang yayamanin. The, the mere fact na naibigay nila sa atin yun. Uh, dapat Pagpasalamat na tayo. Choosy pa ba tayo at this point? Uh, medyo glossy naman talaga. So, yun. Pak na pak sa akin yun. Um, I like the songs. You know, a lot of the songs that they used were original songs. So, the very first song was sung by Jessica Sanchez. Um, it was good. I just preferred the Mabuhay version. Feeling ko mas snappy kasi yung Mabuhay. But, you know, of course, they had other plans. Although, I will commend the two songs that they used for Swim and for Evening Gown. I thought that it was original. And uh, para ngayon sa bagong generation, uh, 
for me, unknown sa akin yung song, unknown din yung mga kumanta. But it doesn't matter kasi yung vibe niya parang bini-bini na song. Bini-bini. And ikaw ang Miss Universe ko. I know it won't be as iconic, but it's a start. Um, I think akmang-akma naman dun sa mga segments kung saan natin sila narinig. And guys ha, nakaka-LSS sila ha. I mean, minsan nakikita ko yung sarili ko or naririnig ko yung sarili ko naglilinis, nagpapakain ng pusa. Medyo kinakanta ko pa ulit-ulit yung iilang linya kasi hindi ko naman memorize yung song. But it was very catchy. Feeling ko bawing-bawi naman because um, I remember when they advertised who the performance, uh, the performers would be, medyo taas ang kilay natin. Parang dahu, dahu yung mga yan. But di naman natin sila masyado nakita nag-perform. So parang good. But at the same time, uh, at least na showcase yung mismo songs. And maganda naman. Maganda naman yung kinalabasan. Um, the host, uh, Casey Montero, of course, is a pro. And he has, he has also hosted several uh, beauty pageant events back in the 2000s. Nakita na rin naman natin siya sa Binibining Pilipinas. So, walang problema pagdating sa hosting. Siguro may konti lang talaga. Uh, hindi ko rin talaga maintindihan. Bakit balik ko pa rin ang dila. Pero sana mas pulido lang yung pronunciation ng mga provinces. Pero apart from that, okay naman. I, I know that he got uh, a little bit of a backlash on social media because of his exchange with Pauline Amelinx. Pero uh, I think they explained that it was edited naman kasi. That's why it appeared as if they were like cold to each other or that he wasn't as responsive to Pauline. Um, another thing, so going back to the stage, I really, really like the colors. Um, I know that we were all very critical with the stage, lalo na pagdating dun sa part na feeling natin very stationary yung mga images, lalo na sa preliminaries. Mins minsan ko na rin na-mention na talagang stationary siya at hindi siya ganun kabongga kasi usually ang preliminaries mas low-key. So, when you go into the finals, um, nag-expect naman talaga ako ng uh, play of lights, play of images. Although, I do wish na sana man lang may ibang segments na nakita natin yung mga face ng mga girls, like yung ibang photoshoots nila, lalo na pag rumarampa sila, para makita natin yung konting bio about them too. But anyway, again, very nitpicky. Wala naman talagang problema. I, I like how everything, the colors, lalo na sa evening gown, nagustuhan ko na parang very celestial yung dating ng background. So, ayan. Um, the cut was very snappy. Now, I know that um, during the preliminaries on October 23rd, uh, nung gabi nun, nag-tape na rin sila ng uh, finals to be shown on Sunday, which was October 25th. So, Agad-agad, nag-cut na sila to top 16. And the ladies who got into top 16 were no surprise. A lot of them were from Aces and Queens. There were some of independent. But these are the girls who made it. So we have a clan. No surprise there. We had Albay. Uh, Biliran got in because she had the most votes dun sa Lazada um, paandar nila. We had Bohol, we had Cavite, we had Cebu City, Cebu Province, we had Davao, we had Iloilo, we had Mandawe, and this one I'm really happy na na-recognize nila kasi kita nyo naman yung roster guys, medyo mahirap makapenetrate kung hindi ka uh, miyembro ng isang kampo, but I'm really happy about this one, Miss Amis Oriental. I felt that she did really, really well nung preliminaries. And then, we also have Paranaque, we also had Pasig, Quezon City, of course, Romblon, and Taguig. So, wala naman talagang surprise doon. Although, um, I was asked, Tita, meron ka bang mga El Tukuyo? Wala naman ako mga El Tukuyo, but I also checked on the comment section, lalo na sa Tita. So, fashion train, alunod na lunod na kami. Pero maraming salamat, guys. At least, nandun yung traffic, nandun kayo nag-uusap. Pero... Medyo nabasa ko na nang hinayang sila with the likes of Miss Makati, Miss Batanes, na alam naman natin na sobrang nag-move ng heaven and earth para makarating ng Maynila na sumakay sa isang cargo ship. So, sana man lang binigyan ng pakonsuelo. Pero, ganun talaga, um, 
hindi siguro talaga umabot yung scores. Uh, medyo nang hinayang din ako sa kawalan ni Oriental Mindoro kasi alam ko magaling naman din talaga magsalita si Doktora Adi. Uh, of course, si Pasay, medyo nalungkot din ako kasi alam ko strong suit din niya yung communication skills. Um, wala rin si Camarines Sur. So, eto lang naman yung mga naisip ko. Pero, um, happy naman ako dun sa top 16 na pinili nila. Parang wala naman akong violent reactions doon. So, moving on. Um, the ladies from top 16, by the way, baka may humanash pa sa inyo. Uh, hinubot nila yung mga scores na yan dun sa preliminary. So, ano ba ang, ang preliminaries? Yung nakita natin na Q&A, yung nakita natin na swimsuit at nakita natin na evening gown. So, doon nila hinugot yan. Next. So, agad-agad, the top 16 were given the task to like um, give their opinions or comment on this statement. It says, throughout the journey, you have discovered that you are a phenomenal woman who is conditioned for greater. How can you create a positive and lasting impact to the world around you? So, for me, um, lahat sila magagaling. Kasi lahat sila, plakado naman yung com skills eh. So, ang dating kasi sa akin yan, medyo ayaw mo nang pakinggan lahat. Kasi halos lahat magagaling naman mag-English eh. But there were some who really stood out for me. Um, I want to commend Miss Amis, Oriental. I felt that she was concise during that part. And she said something about the power of storytelling. Kasi it's true storytelling na parang may malalaman ka about the past and kaya mong ma-change yung mga future. So maganda yung naging direction ng answer niya. I also like um, the answer of Michelle Gumabo of Quezon City. She talked about sports. And she talked about like fulfillment of dreams. So naintindihan ko coming on her side, that's her brand. So talagang ibibida niya yung pagiging disciplinado, yung talaga, talagang pagiging determined. Um, I really like Rabia because actually, uh, pagdating kay Rabia, parang hindi mo masyadong mapapansin eh. Pero umpisa pa lang, nagpaparamdam na siya ng mga hints, hints na kapanapanalo siya eh. I'm sinabi ni Rabia, it had something to do with her passion for education. And she did say something about, I am a phenomenal woman with heartfelt something. But the, basta parang may heart something. It was like branding. It sounded to me like Pia words back, but... Not exactly what Pia said during Miss Universe, pero yung bilis ng utak na kailangan ma-associate tong mga words na to sa akin. But, for this round, ang ibibigay ko talaga is itong taong nakabawi ng gusto. Because I know na sobrang binatikos tong taong to pagdating sa Q&A preliminaries na medyo naratal, medyo naguluhan, pero talagang bawing-bawi po tayo. And this is none other than Alisa Milinaw who talked about uh, the women who talked about using the language na mas komportable ka and she delivered everything in Bisaya. I mean, guys, I don't know if you understand the impact of having your own dialect on national TV. This is something that hasn't been done before. Kasi alam niyo naman na pagdating sa Pilipinas, nangingibabaw ang English at nangingibabaw yung galing natin sa pagsasalita ng English. Whether basic English yan, o kaya naman average English, o kaya naman English na lumaki sa ibang bansa. Uh, ngayon lang tayo nakarinig and I remember kung gaano kalakas yung impact niyan because I was also on Titas of Pageantry, I was also trying to reply to the other commenters while we were watching together either dun sa mismong Empire na website, um, sa TV or sa ibang um, channel, social media channels and I remember na hindi lang nagsanib sa yung mga fanase na Bisaya or Ilonggo from the Bisayan region to Mindanao, nakaramdam din ng halos kukuha na daw sila ng tissue. I mean, ganun yung impact niya na naririnig mo. It was so heartfelt na parang I feel na right after this stint by Eliza, marami ng mga susunod na mga kandidata na talagang isusulong or ipupush talaga yung paggamit nila ng dialect nila. So, it was very emotional for a lot of people na feeling ko kahit na hindi tama yung translation, tagus sa laman kung ano yung sinabi niya. So, I'm gonna post also the translations para makita naman ninyo. 
Now, um, let's go now to swimwear. Now, ito, aliw na aliw ako kasi I really was not expecting a lot right after the preliminaries. Um, but, thankfully, uh, Ferne One, or from Amato Couture, he was the one who designed um, the white swimsuit of the ladies. Meron silang parang sheer overcoat with um, feathery and bird details. Feeling ko ang ganda naman ng dating nun. But what I really like were the designs of the swimwear. No, he had um, he offered three designs, but I particularly love the one-piece swimsuits. Now, usually when it comes to beauty pageants, I'm more of a two-piece sort of girl. Yun yung tinitingnan ko. Kaso lang ang problema sa two-piece kasi kapag mali yung cut, nagmumuka siyang diaper. So, kanina, nung um, chinek ko ulit, there were three. There were three designs that he offered. One was like a bralette with a bikini bottom. The other one was just uh, a one piece na very low yung cut. And then the other was uh, worn by April Smith. Feeling ko siya lang yung medyo na iba ng swimwear. But dun sa mga nag one piece, feeling ko it was such a good decision kasi the one piece swimsuit had structure and talagang na-cinch niya yung mga kailangan na-cinch at, kay, at yung mga naitago niya yung mga kailangan itago. The, the cut was a little too high for me, but okay lang naman. At least nakakita tayo ng mas maraming legs and mas maraming girls ang nakabawi from the preliminary um, performance. So, I do have some standouts for you. Uh, I did like Biliran. She was the one who opened the show. Aklan was also nice with her figure. Uh, I also would like to commend Lu Pixon of Mandawe. Uh, I know that she won the runway challenge or the pasarela challenge. Kitang kita naman. I really liked Romblon. Ang sexy ni Romblon. Pag nakakita ka ng mga... Uh, photos ni Rob Blonde in motion, may kita mo talaga S-line kung S-line, bewangan at balakangan kung balakangan. I really like Rabia's performance. Now, Rabia, I know, has a very petite frame, but hindi ka nag-focus sa frame niya. Nag-focus ka sa fez value at saka sa hair. Pwede mong ulit-ulitin kasi makikita mo parang it was very Kelsey Merritt of Victoria's Secret. Yung pahampas, yung mga looks niya from yung mga side glances niya at saka yung fez. Fez naman kasi talaga. And maganda, uh, I learned that it took her a while to master her pasarela from her trainer. Uh, pero determined daw talaga si Bagets kaya naman talaga nakita natin kung gaano kaplakado yung pasarela niya. I also also love Bella's performance because Bella had a double twirl. It's just that hindi natin masyado na feel yung twirl niya kasi yung camera nung time na yun, hindi natin nakita dun sa leg work. Nakita natin yung face niya and yung panghampas ng hair niya. But yeah, that was a classy response to nakita natin na performance sa Miss Grand International uh, Thailand nung nagpaikot-ikot parang tornado. But with Bella, mas uh, low-key but plakado. At alam mo naman kayang i-execute ni Bella because, you know, she is a ballerina. But um, also, for this segment, I want to give, uh, kung ako lang naman ang magsiscore, I want to give this one to Eliza because 14 niya to eh. Ito yung tipo ng swimsuit na para sa kanya. Ito yung tipo ng rampa na para sa kanya. So, kitang-kita mo, just like a gazelle, ang haba-haba niya, ang ganda-ganda ng strides niya. Hindi niya kailangan masyadong um, magpaandar. Hindi niya kailangan masyadong mag-post ng bonggam-bongga. Sobrang effortless lang yung pagpunta niya from point A to point B. So, ang ganda tingnan ng fit and form. And na-showcase talaga. She is really a model. May kita mo talaga na i-model naman talaga niya ng gusto yung swimwear. So, now, um, let's move into my favorite segment, Evening Gown. Now, I'm not gonna give you a blow-by-blow -blow account of what I thought about the individual Evening Gowns because I am still considering uh, doing a separate review on that. But, again, like what I mentioned earlier, I really loved how the set changed to something more celestial. Um, I like the song that came with it. Uh, I mentioned ko na rin na it would have been really perfect sana kung meron tayong konting elevation 
Um, kasi the, the stage itself was so flat. But I think they did that para mas mukhang magmalaki yung stage. But overall, um, hindi naman ako masyadong kabado na merong mga madudulas. So, okay naman. It's just that the gown quality or the gown designs from preliminaries, mas nagustuhan ko pala kesa dito sa... Uh, finals. But here are some of my standouts. I will be giving this one also to Rabia. She was the only one who wore red. And this is really funny because usually kapag merong um, finals, nakikita natin maraming mga girls ang nagpupula. But this time, parang feeling yata ng mga girls, ay maraming mag-red. Pero si Rabia lang ang nag-stick mag-red. So, she is red and she is power. Next, um, I also want to give this one to Bella. I loved her gown. She wore two gowns from Fernie Amato. But I think I like this gown better. This was a royal blue gown. Um, hindi ko pa nakikita tong silhouette na to sa Philippine fashion tree, yung parang cohorts. And it was fully beaded. It had movement. Um, maganda kapag ito twirl ni Bella. And she also showcased her twirl. And I like that it had beading na parang kapag malayuan, um, nagbe-blend lalo or nagko-complement dun sa parang celestial thing going on sa background. But, call me bias! I'm gonna give this round to Alaysa Malinao. Now, I do know that two ladies wore a terno. Pero guys, iba talaga ang impact sa akin ng terno nito. It was Minorca Mercado 2.0. And... I felt na it was the perfect silhouette for the perfect girl. Now, I know sinulong talaga ni Alaysa yung pagpipilipiniana. It hasn't been done before. And uh, I like that she was able to translate it to the evening wear competition. Because as we all know, guys, ang terno, usually nasa national costume levels lang siya. So, I like that she was able to elevate it without even putting embellishments on the terno. So, I'd like to say kudos also to Joe uh, Rubio who did such an impeccable job. It was so clean. It was so pristine. It was classy. And uh, I think Eliza was also the perfect woman to wear such a terno. Now, if this will also pave the way for more women or for more candidates um, na magpupush ng terno sa finals, then, you know, so be it. Kasi yung nakita natin terno kay Eliza, uh, hindi naman siya sobrang balot na balot eh. May sexy factor pa rin doon. The, the back was low. Uh, wala kang maitatago. Bawal ang bilbil. Bawal ang puson. So, I think it was a really, really good way to showcase something that is so dignified, that is so traditionally Filipino. But yes, um, more on that later on. So, right after the rampa for evening gown, um, Nagkat sila agad ng top 5. Now, medyo masalimuot tong top 5 natin pero mamaya na natin pag-usapan yan. Please bear with me. So, the top 5 ladies who made it were Michelle Gumabaw of Quezon City, Billy Hackinson of Cavite, we had Pauline Amelings of Bohol, we have, of course, the eventual winner, Miss Iloilo Rabia Mateo, and we also have uh, Bella Ismael of Paranaque. Now, by the time mag-top 5 sila, at by the time bigyan sila ng Q&A, guys, back to zero yung scores nila. Now, they did a twist when it came to the final Q&A. Dalawa yung binigay nila na questions. The first question is, um, an individual question that they have to pick, but the second question is a question na pare-pareho silang makakarinig. So, the first one, medyo different. Um, tinanong muna si Michelle. Michelle asked, Michelle um, was asked about an app na hindi siya makaka, you know, nakatulong sa kanya this time of the pandemic. She answered, it was the Bible. Um, Kavita was asked about uh, an advice na ibibigay niya sa mga first-time voters. She answered, although this is actually Billy's strongest suit, I felt that Kavita did not answer the question. Nag nagsalita siya ng English, sinagot niya, but hindi niya sinagot yung actual na question. Yun lang naman ang observation ko. Guys, please um, try to check on the transcript as well. Um, Bohol was asked about an online purchase. Um, kung ano ba yung mga nagiging uh, decision process niya kapag may mga ipopost siya or online purchase. Again, nasagot din niya, pero parang medyo ang vague lang for me. And, um, uh, 
Iloilo was asked about a personality na ilalagay niya sa currency kung meron siyang chance maglagay nun. And she was very straight to the point. She was political in a way without offending other people. I mean, it was such a good play of word and it was such a good way to brand being ang Ilonga and being someone who did really well with her academics. So talagang might as well push for education because we have someone like Miriam Santiago na uh, umangat dahil sa edukasyon. I also have Paranyake, who is so cool, calm, and collected, maybe to her disadvantage, kasi she lost time. So, siguro kung meron tayong redo for Paranyake, siguro dapat sana mas naging porsigido pa siya sa answer niya. Masyado yatang naging relaxed. So, there. Uh, as for the roster of winners, um, they gave the fourth runner up to Cavite. And then they gave it the the third runner up. They gave this one to Pauline Amelings of Bohol. Second runner up they gave to Michelle Gumabaw of Quezon City. And first runner up they gave to Bella Ismael, uh, which I felt was such a good move because Bella is also an unknown in pageantry. This is her first foray in pageantry, so to beat more than 40 girls and go head to head in top two i think that was just such a feat for a newcomer like bella but even more so to an unknown rabia mateo from ilo ilo na nakita mo lang saglit nung nag uh, press presentation sila sa manila hotel tapos umariba na tuloy tuloy lang um Kita na naman. I think that it was really very evident kung gano naman siya nakakit. Parang si Rabia, parang siyang nakaamoy ng dugo. Tapos baby shark siya. Tapos chomp, chomp, chomp. Yung talagang, she was really unstoppable. Uh, kung ano man yung meron sa kanya uh, nung gabing yon, whether it was her styling na hindi pa naman talaga ganun kaplakado, uh, binawi niya sa lahat ng pwede niyang bawiin, lalo na sa pinaka-strong suit niya, which is calm skills at yung bilis ng pag-iisip. Now, punta na tayo ngayon sa bad. Because there were a number of things na talagang hindi tayo makakamove on hanggat hindi natin mapag-uusapan. So, I will start first with um, the fees that you had to pay for to watch all of the shows na pinakita nila. Now, I know that they offered another um, another platform na para mas mababa yung babayaran mo. But, yung Ring Light series na yan, at first, nagets ko yung, um, nagets ko kasi yung scheme. Alam naman natin na pandemic ngayon, medyo hindi rin naman talaga sila nakabawi when it comes to uh, ticket sales. So, naintindihan ko na doon nila babawiin. Um, kung gusto mo manood ng exclusives dun sa Empire na website dun sa Ring Light series. Now, hindi lang talaga maganda kasi nakapag-under-deliver talaga sila. They weren't posting on time, hindi kinakaya ng servers nila yung search ng tao. Maraming nagre-reklamo and maraming dumadaan sa amin na reklamo. Wala naman kaming magawa. Although eventually, nagkaroon na rin kami ng parang contact directly uh, sa Empire na nagme-mention sa amin kung anong oras ipapalabas yung mga shows. And even so, hindi na susunod yung schedule. So, a lot of people were, you know, really angry kasi why would we pay for something na hindi naman natin na refund kung ang ending pinapanood natin tong mga nire-release nila sa mga pirated na sites um, dun sa mga iba-ibang channels even sa YouTube tsaka sa Facebook so parang nawalang saysay yung mga perang ibinabaha nila kasama ako doon, nabudol ako doon <laughs> Kasi hindi ko naman alam na kailangan na pwede naman palang mag-share ng credentials. Um, another thing na medyo hindi kagandahan dito sa whole event na to was that uh, sinulong nila yung paggamit mo ng language, ng dialect mo. Now, commendable yon It's just that they did promise interpreters for the ladies, preliminaries pa lang. Now, alam ko for a fact na wala silang interpreter na pre-novide because some of the ladies who opted to speak in their dialect made sure na whiplash. Akala nila na kapag nandun sila dun sa mga 
um, Q&A dun sa nakita natin sa Baguio Country Club na merong medyo outdoorsy. Akala nila meron then and there magkakaroon sila ng interpreter pero wala because inad na lang yung mga um, translation dun na lang sa final edit. Parang wala yata sa usapan yun. Um, for me also, the cut from top 16 to top 5, I felt that was really severe. No? Sinasabi nila it had something to do with yung production length, maybe production cost. So parang feeling ko naman, uh, sayang kasi dalawang questions din lang naman ang binigay nyo dun sa top 5 eh. And yung top 5 na naipili ninyo, parang predictable na to begin with. Parang umpisa pa lang ng competition, eto na rin naman talaga yung top 5 eh. So parang umeffort pa kayo magkaroon ng maraming girls. So sayang naman. Eh kung tinap 5 nyo na rin lang at mukhang iisipin ng tao na lutong-luto na rin lang naman yan, sana nagpa-top 10 na lang naman kayo. But then again, uh, hindi pa siya ganun kalaking issue para malagay natin dun sa ugly review natin. But yeah, I felt that the 16 to top 5, I felt that was too severe of a cut. Para man lang sana mabigyan ng chance yung mga iba. I mean, malay natin kung yung mga tipo ng Pasig o kaya Romblon, eh, mag-microphone buffet extravaganza, eh, di lalong nagulo yung mga supposed top 5 na yan. So, alam ko dun sa top 5 na yan, may sama ng loob because one of the front runners of course, Alaysa Malinaw, did not make it. But, let's reserve that for the ugly review. Now, this one is really, really bad. Uh, leaks. Now, they can blame the people here in Manila na sobrang maligalig tayo, nakaka-update, kaka-update, but the truth is, the information has been lying there all along. Iilan lang sila sa Baguio, guys. So, lahat ng mga information na nag-trickle down dito sa Manila, lahat ng pinag-uusapan natin, galing din yan sa Baguio. So, magturuan na lang sila kung sino-sino sa kanila. Because early on, nakita na rin natin na medyo nalin lang tayo ng very slight dun sa... Um, itsura ng magiging crown. Now, I do know for a fact that the first crown that they, uh, hindi naman, hindi naman kasi official, there, there was a crown na, na parang sinabi nila na could this be the design? It was a floral crown and I am very familiar with this crown because guys, um, I think minsan ko na rin na i-mention sa inyo, I am very active sa mga history websites, jewelry websites, or yeah, jewelry pages, royalty pages. So, na-recognize ko rin kaagad that it wasn't something that was exclusively designed, that it was the Bedford Tiara. Um, medyo nilin lang nila tayo dun, but that didn't matter because sa Facebook, may kumakalan ng design ng crown na medyo tsakang-tsaka tayo. <laughs> Eventually, yun na rin pala yung naging design ng Filipina crown. So, parang you get my my point. Maraming mga information na pinag-chismisa natin dito sa Manila. Natutuo naman din pala. Katulad ng mga nag-leak na top 5, nag-leak na gown. So, parang umabot na tayo sa point na baka naman systemic tong mga leaks na to. Baka galing din mismo. May bas-bas din mismo sa organization. But, again, these are just speculations. I do feel na parang kung ganyan, they could have um, had more stringent measures para hindi na nakawala tong mga information na to. Kasi sobrang award ha. Grabe yung dami ng information na umabot sa atin. All we had to do was pick alin sa mga information na yun ang paniniwalaan natin. Pero I mean, how can you really alter these things? I mean, to begin with, a lot of the photos were really blurry. So alam mo na kinuha pa sikreto. Alam mo na talagang... Uh, yeah, nandun. I mean, but ka ba e effort? All you had to do was just put two and two together. Alam mo naman, may idea ka naman kung ano sinuot ni Gao, ni ganito, ni ganyan. So, hindi pa na-announce si winner. Alam na dito sa Manila kung sino si winner. Pahala ka na lang kung sinong paniniwalaan mo. Uh, hindi pa na i-announce si top five. May idea ka na kasi nasilip mo na yung mga gowns nila to begin with. So, parang sayang. Medyo anti-climactic lang. There were a few who learned about the winner early on. Um, unfortunately, kasama kami doon. So, parang habang nagkakagulo ang... Uh, buong pagpagland, ang buong mga 
um, sumusubaybay sa pageants, parang minsan gusto rin namin sabihin, kalma, kalma, yung mga pinaglalaban yung bets, eh, hindi naman din talaga nakapasok. So, yun lang naman yun. Now, let's go to the ugly part. Now, honestly, um, kung mag-check kayo ngayon sa YouTube, kung mag-check kayo ng mga names ng personalities, mag-gets nyo naman kung ano yung ugly part na sinasabi ko. Kasi itong pagkapanalo ni Rabia, nakabitan ngayon ng controversy because two of the contestants, maybe even more, pero medyo maingay lang talaga, uh, yung dalawa, um, nagbigay na sila ng mga statements. So, The first one is Michelle Gumabaw who left the venue. She was not there at the press conference of the winners and runners, uh, the winner and the runners up. So parang malaking question mark ngayon because uh, her sportsmanship behavior is now being questioned. She did give out uh, a statement saying na parang kaya niya yung natatalo, hindi niya kaya yung mga taong nagtatanong sa kanya. So parang Malaking question mark yun kasi parang, di ba dapat nandun ka? Kahit na ano pa yung naging resulta, dapat nandun ka. Because her absence would mean na ano ba yan? Um, sinabihang ka ba? Nakipag-areglo ba sa'yo na sa'yo ibibigay yung corona? So bakit ka nagmamaktol kung bigla kang nawala? Now, I know it sounds a little harsh, but... I don't want to sugarcoat things for you, but there are so many things um, that people are saying on social media na parang dapat sana nagpakita siya na parang nilunok niya lahat yan kung hindi siya nanalo at nagpakita siya ng bonggam-bongga. Parang masalang makita ng mga tao na hindi nyo man lang ako pinanalo, pero nandito ako ngayon. Um, another ugly issue was yung mga... Uh, I, cryptic IG stories na Sandra Lemonon alluding also to uh, some of the things that happened behind the scenes. Now, what technically guys, wala pa siyang nire-reveal. Parang puro threats lang siya na meron siyang mga gustong ipakalat. Umabot na sa point na yung national director nila na Hisham si Sopsop nag nagbigay na ng statement, and I'm gonna have to flash this, about um, being a true queen. So, Some of the personalities who were close to Sandra Lemonon, who were also close to Michelle Gumabaw, nakukulihan mo ng screenshots ng mga hanash nila on social media. They would post uh, the statement of Shamsi, tapos imamock nila yung statement ni Shamsi with whatever observations na meron sila. Now, I don't like how it's going because it's so public. Medyo nakakahiya na, lalo na itong mga taong to, hindi naman sila tabloid na katulad namin. I mean, hindi naman sila pageant page na pwedeng humanas siya ganyan. So, medyo nakakahiya lang, lalo na sa international pageant community na ang aga-aga pa lang, nag -away, away na. And more than anything else, nakakabastos para kay Rabia na hindi nyo man lang binigyan ng kahit na isang araw man lang na enjoy yung panalo niya. Because at the end of the day, wala pa yata 24 hours, nagpapapress ko na, nagpapamedia tour, virtual media tour na si Rabia at nakikita niyo si Arabia umiiyak na because of the bashing na nakukuha niya. Because some of the allegations were um, as petty as having a glam team na inayusan siya, na mukha namang hindi, kasi mukha namang hindi pa ganun kaplakado yung styling ni Rabia to begin with, to having um, Rabia obtain the questions, kaya siya ganun kagaling. Now, I do know na nagpa-interview si Rabia at talagang dinispell niya lahat yon. So, I would really have to take her word for it. Now, I don't know because I don't have that relationship with Sandra Lemonon and I'm gonna be very honest with you guys on this. Um, minsan yun ang natanong sa akin, why are you not including her in your list? Why are you not even mentioning her? And this is because we've had some ugly history in the past. I had um, a blind item entry about styling and she commented on that and made such a huge issue out of it. Um, it was really a call out 
on risque styling. So, styling na kita yung side boobs masyado, kita yung mga butt cheeks, kita yung... So, parang umabot na sa punto na nagkaroon na sila ng narrative na nambubuli ako, nagkaroon na ng narrative na parang kinikitil ko yung karapatan nila to dress however they want to dress. Now, of course... On my end, hindi ako nagkaroon ng platform to say something kasi gusto ko, nandun na lang ako sa tita sa pageantry, medyo throwing konting shade na lang. But, yeah, umabot na rin sa point na even some of the publications na pick up na rin yan because someone made a narrative out of it. But, ngayon, at least nakikita ng tao na uh, may ganong vibe talaga. Na kapag may nakita siyang mali, uh, hindi naman din talaga siya nawawala dun sa pinaglalaban niya na i-cancel yung chismis culture because she is also practicing this right now. Now, hindi ko i-invalidate yung nararamdaman ni Sandra Limonon because I do feel the baka naman she felt slighted na hindi siya nakapasok sa top 5 or baka she felt slighted kung ano man yung mga treatment sa kanya doon. Um, being an independent candidate, this is something that she will have to... Um, I don't know, announce sooner or later. But that is not my story to tell though. I'm just saying that whatever it is that she is doing, it's not the right channel to do so because, you know, she was an official candidate. Um, hindi maganda na ngayon mo sila papakawalan. Ngayon nakakapanalo pa lang ni Rabia. I feel na meron siyang proper time and proper place. Now, as for the two issues, um kung ano, siguro yung issue na pinaglalaban nila, I do know that there were some members of the hair and makeup team who went to up to Baguio. But they went up to Baguio as guests. So they were not there to mingle with their girls. Kasi parang ang nangyari, nagkaroon ng guidelines yung organization na kung sakaling may mga naiwan or may mga pahabol pa tong mga girls na to, pwede nilang ihabol sa kanila. Now, Um, meron ding reports na yung Aces and Queens, meron daw silang exclusive na hair and makeup people. I don't know if this is true. Now, if this is true, I would understand na unfair nga naman. But at the same time, your hair and makeup will actually not work in obtaining that crown. Kasi nakita naman natin na hindi lang yun yung basihan ni. Eh. There's something deeper na may basihan. But again, um, I think the organization will have to address this one sooner or later. Now, another cheese miss, and I hope you take this with a grain of salt because as much as yung sources namin ay legit, we are not there. Tayo tayo, wala tayo doon. So we cannot um, say na itong source na to ay 100% correct. But I do know that medyo nagkagulo sila doon after the uh, judging because not all of the judges were informed yun ang magiging scheme ng judging. Now, naturally, kapag nag-judge ka ng isang pageant, magbibigay ka ng mataas na puntos doon sa mga feeling mo magagaling at nag-advance doon sa mga segments. But I think one of some of the judges did not know na yung scheme pala was very 90s Miss Universe or year 2000 Miss Universe na tinatanggal mo yung highest and lowest scores. So, I don't actually know the details on how they did it, kung tinanggal ba nila lahat ng high scores at low scores, but ang nagmatter is yung mga nasa gitna. That's why a lot of people were saying na laglag si Eliza, even if she did well dun sa opening speech, dun sa evening gown at saka sa swimsuit competition. Now, medyo masalimuot to if that is the case because there were reports that when Shamsi found out that Eliza did not make it, she got very upset and it also upset some of the judges. Now, Shamsi seemed like she tried to um, exercise her power as a national director and rectify yung pagkakamali by um, hosting a deliberation. But I suppose some of the judges who knew about the judging scheme did not budge, did not want to change their scores and ended up with the top five na nakita natin. So what I'm just saying is that should it be true, ang dapat kumahanas ngayon si Eliza Malinaw kasi siya yung nasagasaan. Now, um, again, these are cheese chismes. Uh, do not take my word for it. 
marami kaming kailangan salain sa titas of pageantry but these are the things na medyo nagsistick out because we have like maybe four or five people na talagang nandun na talagang nagsasabi so I don't know with you guys um anong takeaway ko dito walang takeaway ko naman dito is we have a new queen she is beautiful I feel that everybody will work to make her successful at Miss Universe, uh, malalampasan niya rin to. Yung mga maiingay ngayon sa social media, tatahimik din naman yan. And as early as now, nakikita naman ng buong madla na kahit tanggalin mo si Rabia doon sa arena ng beauty pageant, kahit ilagay mo siya sa news, ilagay mo siya sa interviews, hindi naman din tayo talaga mapapahiya. So, ang um, takeaway ko dito, kung meron silang... Uh, rule na walang hair and makeup people, maganda rin. Magandang practice din. Kasi at least that's added skills for the ladies na matuto sila ng hair and makeup nila. And as for the girls na gustong sumali sa beauty pageants, lalo na sa Miss Universe Philippines, uh, they would have to focus on charm, developing charm, wit, substance, and delivery. Kasi ito yung mga importanteng bagay. Medyo mahaba to guys, but I hope you enjoyed this review. Ayoko nang i-part 1, part 2 to. Isang pasada na natin to. Maraming maraming salamat and good night guys. Good morning, good afternoon, kung saan man kayo sa parte ng mundo. Thank you. Alam ko nilaban ko to, pero gets nyo naman kung bakit. Miss Universe Philippines review to. Goodbye!